New at 6 tonight, a wounded American warrior making a huge difference this holiday season in the lives of military veterans. He is Army Major Dennis Skelton. He goes by DJ. He's currently a student at Monterey's Naval Postgraduate School, and he has earned the title, the honor, uh, that is difficult to imagine. The most wounded commander in U.S. military history. Action News reporter Brittany Nielsen sat down with him for an in-depth talk. Meet Army Major DJ Skelton, a current student at the Naval Postgraduate School and the most wounded commander in U.S. military history. My face was pretty much gone. Um, you know, for the most part, I, I, there was no reason that I should have lived that, to that, you know. A West Point graduate, Skelton deployed to Iraq and fought in the Second Battle of Fallujah. In November of 2004, his platoon's first mission was simple protect a critical overpass. So as a platoon leader, uh, that was it, go defend the overpass. It's as simple as the mission was. And by the time that my platoon had gotten to that intersection, uh, it was in the evening. What he couldn't know or see in the dark was that the enemy had dug in just behind a nearby berm, and they knew U.S. troops would be coming. Um, we got attacked, and, and that uh, in that firefight, I got injured. So I was the first to get hit. Um, I had actually made it to uh, one of the cement pylons up underneath the bridge, so we were pretty much at the location of the enemy. Um, uh, I got hit through a series of, of, of rounds from uh, you know, weapons like AK-47 rounds, so I have a lot of bullet holes through my arm and, and through my body. A grenade hit the pylon he was leaning on. The head broke off and went through his leg. Shrapnel exploded through his upper jaw, through the palate of his mouth, and exited through his left eye. Besides the bullet wounds he already received, his own ammunition began to fire from the heat of the grenade explosion. They uh, successfully uh, figured out a way to evacuate me uh, under really heavy fire, which is really impressive. Um, and got me to a, uh, a uh, like a MASH uh, support hospital. He ended up at Walter Reed Medical National Military Center in Washington, D.C., where he spent a month in a medically induced coma. He woke up to his upper jaw destroyed, his left arm still attached but unusable, his knee down to his ankle, now titanium, and traumatic brain injuries. Plus so many bullet hole wounds, doctors stopped counting. Um, I was one of the few that could not meet any medical retention standards to stay in, right, um, and refused to leave the Army. I, I felt like even though I couldn't physically perform some of the requirements to be a soldier, um, some of the ones, you know, doing push-ups and sit-ups and running, um, I felt that intellectually, you know, I wasn't that smart, but I graduated from West Point, I spoke Chinese from graduating here at the Defense Language School a long time ago, uh, and I had this combat experience in, in small team leadership. Skelton became a catalyst for change, forcing the Army to decide what to do with a soldier who could not physically qualify to enter battle, but wanted to serve. At the time, there was no alternative. His advocacy spurred programs for wounded warriors. So I just became one of the, the original uh, wounded warriors um, of this generation, of this conflict that really challenged the way we looked at um, just the human spirit and what, what we could give back and how we could contribute to the mission. You know, I never joined the military to be a wounded warrior advocate. Right? I joined the military to serve my country in a specific manner. Um, I wanted to serve in the infantry. So back he went, determined to keep a promise he'd made to his platoon on that fateful first deployment. I convinced myself that I could physically go back to the infantry in a way that I wouldn't jeopardize uh, soldiers that were around me. In 2011, he joined his previous unit, halfway through a year-long deployment to Afghanistan, and ended up leading a cavalry unit. Between surgeries and deployments, Skelton served as a military advisor on veterans affairs at the Pentagon, wrote the Our Hero Handbook, a guide for wounded soldiers and their families. And he co-founded Paradox Sports, a nonprofit that gets wounded warriors back to their outdoor passions. I wanted to 
uh, help other wounded warriors and disabled in helping them get back to playing in the outdoors and doing the things that really define their happiness and and uh, kind of completed their their life, right? We work, but we also need to play. Skelton is married now with a baby boy and stationed in Monterey for the third time. He considers the peninsula home. He's finishing his master's degree at NPS, majoring in national security affairs. He's debating stepping away from the Army in the next year to transition to other goals. What I wanted to know was, would he do it all over again? Would you make those decisions again? I would. I would. I would duck next time. Um, but I, all the other decisions I'd make. <laughs> in Monterey, in the company of a true hero, Brittany Nielsen, KSBW, Action News 8.